Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland uh, and in this short video, uh, another video in a series of videos dealing with hypothesis testing uh, is going to deal with a particular example or a particular scenario uh, I suppose the, the next scenarios in this particular set of videos have actually been provided by a colleague of mine here uh, uh, who has sort of set them as uh, you know as examples for students in his statistics class uh, Stephen, Stephen Walsh's name is uh, so thanks Stephen for these particular examples but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna run through these examples and try to rationalize with respect to what type of test uh, the examples require uh, and how to perform that particular test okay so let's just have a look at the scenario that's been presented here uh, so let me just read through the scenario we're gonna read through the scenario a few times and we're gonna try to extract all the relevant information okay and based off the information that we're provided with actually undertake a particular hypothesis test but one of the questions that are usually asked uh, of me uh, from students is when I'm given a scenario in an exam or in an assignment or an assessment, uh, how do I figure out what type of test is required? How do I know whether it's a single sample test? How do I know whether it's a Z test for a mean or a T test for a mean? Or how do I know whether it's a test, a single sample test for proportion? How do I know if it's a paired samples test or an independent samples test? How do I know if I'm testing a, a correlation coefficient? How do I know if it's analysis of variance and so on and so forth? So this particular test where in this particular series I'm just going to go through test after test and try to rationalize uh, with respect to what type of test is actually involved. So let's read the scenario. Uh, the scenario is uh, the government in trying to win support before an election reduces the tax on petrol and claims that the average price of a litre of petrol is now one euro and 63 cent. Okay? The Automobile Association is not convinced that all petrol retail companies are operating to this average so it undertakes a survey of 35 Irish fuel company outlets and finds that they have an average price of one euro and 65 cent per liter with a standard deviation of 0 0.05 euros or 5 cent. Test at the 5% level of significance the hypothesis that the average price charged by Irish fuel company outlets is higher, higher than the claim by the government. Okay? Now, uh, just with experience, you can sort of figure out what type of test this is, okay, uh, or what type of test is actually required. But what I like to do is I just like to extract out all the numbers, yeah, as we're going through sentence by sentence. And you can see that the government, in trying to reduce, uh, in, in trying to uh, win support before an election, reduces the tax on petrol and claims that the average price of a litre of petrol is now one euro and sixty-three cent. So that number here that's been provided, which is one euro and sixty-three cent, is an average. It's a mean value. So let's just write that down there as a mean value. Okay? Uh, we don't know whether it's a population mean or whether it's a sample mean at this stage. Just let's just we know it's a mean value, okay, at this stage. The Automobile Association is not convinced that all petrol retail companies are operating to this average. So it undertakes a survey of 35 Irish fuel company outlets. So there's my next number. My next number is 35, okay? And this 35 is how many people or how many companies took part in a survey. So actually, this is my sample size here. So this is my sample, my sample size, okay? Now what the scenario also says is that it undertook a survey of these 35 Irish fuel company outlets and finds that they have an average price of one euro and 65 cent per litre. So this is a one euro and 65 cent, okay, is another average, so that's another mean, but it's a mean of the sample, it's the sample mean, okay, that's been provided per litre with a standard deviation of 0 0.05 okay with a standard deviation of zero of uh, five cent so that's a standard deviation that's my standard deviation of my sample that's being provided here and then finally we need to test at the five percent level of significance the hypothesis that the average price charged by Irish fuel company outlets is higher than the claim by the government well, actually, the next number that's given is this 5%. And it says clearly that this test should be conducted at the 5% level of significance. So this is my level, my level of significance, okay? So they're the numbers that are being provided. Let's try to uh, apply, let's try to associate the appropriate symbols with these numbers. The first thing that we know is that these three values here are tightly coupled together. These represent sample information. So the first, the 35 is my sample size. So this is my small n. This 165 is my sample mean, so this is my x bar. And this 0 0.05 is a sample standard deviation, so this is my yes. The 5% is my level of significance, so this is my alpha. And finally, 
Okay, to do a hypothesis test, we have to make a hypothesis with respect, to, we have to construct a hypothesis with respect to a population parameter. So actually, what's left over here is a mean value, which is this assertion being made by the government. So this mean value is, is the hypothesized value that the government is saying that my mean of my population mu should be, okay? Uh, or what we believe it to be, if that makes sense, okay? So now, at this particular stage, what's important is this, is that we've only been given information with respect to one sample, okay? So actually, this is going to be a single sample test, okay? So we've only got information with respect to one sample, so we have, clearly, okay, we have, we have a single sample, sample test, okay? And actually, we've been provided with mean values, so it's a single sample test of of a of a mean, okay? Or more importantly, it's a single sample test of a population mean, because it's about mean values, okay? Now, when it comes to the test statistics, you know, we're going to go through the hypothesis test, which has five steps, and as part of, as one of those steps, step three, we have a test statistic. But we have two types of test statistics for a single sample test of a mean. The first is the Z statistic that looks like this. It's Z is equal to your evidence, X bar, minus your null position, mu, divided by sigma, that's the population standard deviation, over the square root of n. That's the first test statistic. The other alternative that we could have as a test statistic is a t-statistic, which says that t uh, is equal to the evidence, x bar, minus mu, all over s, divided by the square root of n, where s is the sample standard deviation. Now we can probably see that in this scenario and the way we've assigned we've assigned the parameters and the statistics, okay, that we haven't been given any information with respect to the population standard deviation. And as such, we cannot run a z-test in this particular case. So all we've been given is the sample standard deviation, so the more appropriate test statistic to use is this t-statistic here. Okay? So this is the test statistic that we're going to rely upon, and it requires one, two, three, four values. And we have them. We have x-bar, we have mu, we have s, and we also have n, the sample size. So 